do you do, ladies and gentlemen? I am Julius Sumner Miller, and physics is my business. And I should say, how do you do, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls? I am Julius Sumner Miller, and physics is my business. And our special business today is the subject of inertia. And I must make the matter, the idea clear, as follows. Here we have a block of wood at rest on the tabletop. And I ask, what does that block want to do? Answer, the block wishes to remain at rest. Supposing now I have double as much block, and I try in turn to put that system in motion, what do I discover? It also wishes to remain at rest. Moreover, it wishes to remain at rest twice as much. And therefore, we say its inertia is twice as great. And so you discover at once that I have used the term inertia and referred to the idea of mass as synonymous. So mass and inertia are synonymous. And this is all tied up beautifully in Newton's first law, which says what? If a body is at rest, it wishes to remain at rest. And if it is moving uniformly in a straight line, that's what it wants to do. In English, simply, whatever a body is doing, that's what it wants to do. Let's look at Newton's Latin for it. Newton put it in Latin. Axiomata siwa legis motus. Axioms, even laws, laws of motion. Corpus omne persevera in statu suo quiescendi, and so on. And in English, a little more within our competence. Everybody continues in its state of rest or of uniform motion in a straight line unless there are some forces to divert it. Consider now the following. Here you come on April Fool's Day, let us say, on a package, on two packages resting on the ground. Here is one and here is another. And you deliver, you impose a force on the one. I will, instead of with my foot, with my hand. And it experienced such a motion. The force produced the motion in the body of so much inertia. Now I try it with this one. Hardly as much motion. Why? This one is filled with rags and this one with two bricks. And this one has the greater inertia. So, the measure of the mass of a body is its inertia. Consider now the two aspects of Newton's first law. A body at rest wishes to remain so. Here I have a heavy block of wood, a hole in it, and I put a dowel rod in the hole. The dowel rod constitutes the handle. How can I put that handle into the block? As follows. As follows. Notice what happens. I hit the handle. The block remains at rest, whereupon the handle moves into the block. That's the first law. The body of large inertia wishes to remain at rest. Let me pursue this in another way to demonstrate the second part of Newton's law. What did the second part say? If the body is in uniform motion in a straight line, that's what it wants to do. I start again. Now I come down on a firm block. The motion of the handle is arrested. The handle and the block were moving. And what does the block want to do? Keep moving. Whereupon... It lodges itself more firmly on the handle. Thus do we demonstrate Newton's first law in two parts. Let me do this another way. Very pretty. Very pretty. I have a support and a weight W supported by a string and another string with a loop in it here, which I shall show you. Let me call this string A and this string B. I propose to do as follows. I'm going to pull on string V, the lower string. And I can break either string V or string A by invoking Newton's first law. If I pull suddenly on string B, W wishes to remain at rest, and V will break. On the other hand, if I pull gently on B, A supports W already there, plus the force I impose. And I shall show you that exactly with this demonstration. Here is a string. Here is a hook. Here is a weight. 
and the upper string is supporting the load. Here is the lower string, and I am putting a little rod inside here so that my hand is not underneath should the weight fall. I am going to break the lower string. Watch it now, the lower one. There it is, I broke it. Now I am going to change the string. I'm going to change the string. And now I am going to break the upper string by pulling slowly on the lower one. Watch it now, watch, we hope that breaks. Now supposing it does not. One is led to say the experiment has failed. And I say no, the experiment doesn't fail. I have failed to meet the requirements of nature. Watch, I'm going to break the upper string. There it is. And so we can be applauded for success. Consider another demonstration of the same. Here is an enormous weight, 16 pounds. Here is a string attached to it. If I pull on that string in a gentle way, I'll do it by hand, in a gentle way, uh -huh, the string can support the load. Now let me try to accelerate it. What does Newton's first law say? Body wants to remain at rest. It has enormous inertia. Watch it. Do you see? The string has broken. I shall have more to say about this when I talk about Newton's second law. The second law. Consider now another dramatic demonstration. An application of Newton's first law. Because we must not escape the fact that these laws of physics, of nature, of science, have vast applications in plebeian things. A brick, a trowel. Cannot the uh, craftsman, the bricklayer, utilize Newton's first law in this way? Notice if he hit his hand with the trowel, he'd hurt it. But he can hit the brick with absolute abandon and feel nothing. 